<laughs> yes, because you're on the on the slope. Just gotta be careful. Hello, Hello. I'm Frankie. Welcome back to another video. Today we have a very special guest on this channel. Where, where, Who are you? Me? Me? You? Me? You? I, I'm Kathy Cat. Hello, guys. <laughs> and we're meeting currently here in Kyoto on the top of Terrace Kiyomizu, and yeah. I've been having the pleasure of interviewing you a little bit. It's gonna come up in the future, and you're not gonna ask. Now you're gonna ask me something, right? Yeah. But when the, your project comes out, I'll be sure to share it. It's very exciting. If you want to hear me butcher the Japanese language, you can watch that. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job. And I'll show you the view later. Oh, but today I wanted to talk about mm -hmm. privacy when it comes to filming Japanese people and recording Japanese people. And I thought that Kathy Cat would be the perfect person to ask because you do a lot of interviews. Yes. <laughs> so for me, like I get comments sometimes asking why I don't interact with local people more. Mm -hmm. And I definitely do. Especially if I'm traveling alone, people are curious and they talk to me. But I don't necessarily want to take out a camera and make people uncomfortable. Like, mm -hmm. sure, sometimes people might be okay with it, but generally people are more shy and hesitant to be filmed. Yes. And so. that's one of the things that kind of, I got a lot of culture shops coming to Japan, culture shops. But uh, one of them was how people really don't want to be filmed. Uh, the first experience I had here was actually with Yuwa Nanishini Hone. Why did you come to Japan? And that was a TV crew and we were filming in Harajuku and people were on purpose really going out of their way to not even be in a shot walking through. Really? And I was surprised about like people would stop and go in a different direction or they would like try to like go underneath the camera or they would just stop and wait until the take is over. And there's certain parts, some people just want to respect your shoot you know, and don't want to walk into your shot, but a lot of people do really not want to be on camera. People see walk past and they hold up their bag to cover their face. That they so really don't want to be in it. If they walk into the shot, is their face going to be covered or it's, it's just there? I mean, if, if they walk through the shot and they know there's a camera that's on them, if they want to do that, they can do that. Um, but I, it was very interesting to see that even with a professional TV set, it was clearly a Japanese TV show, they really didn't want to be in it. So that's what the first experience I had, I'm like, okay, Japanese people seem to have a different notion about privacy when it comes to being filmed in, in spaces. And that's how I learned that. So with us Japanese, once we started doing street interviews, we take signatures from each and every person. Oh, you get signatures. Like, get yeah, signatures. I was wondering about that. Mm -hmm. Every Japanese person. I think we have some thank you coming through right now. Do you want to wait until they... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it was a, uh, yeah. So you have to get signed permission? I do, permission. generally, yeah, generally we get, like, because we want to 100% make sure that the people are aware, A, that we filmed them, and B, that they are okay with this getting released. We have, like, a form, and we let get people to uh, leave a little note or signature on it to at least confirm that we have officially permission to film them. And that is hard because people will sometimes then go and think over it one more time because you need to put your signature on a piece of paper with text on it, right? And sometimes we had people who then were like, oh yeah, you know what, I'm good. And then we have to delete it. We do delete it. If they say we don't want to be in it, you delete it. That's it. That's just a part of professionalism, I think, in respecting the other person's choices. So in Japan, what's highly frowned upon, I find, is just holding up the camera into someone's face and waiting for a reaction. That is, you put putting someone on the spot, they might not you know, feel comfortable to say anything against mm -hmm. that because they're already in that moment and it's really disrespecting their privacy. Yeah. And the privacy here just tends to be a little bit higher than it might be in other countries. Yeah, it's, I guess, yeah, maybe that was a bit of a, a culture shock for me as well, mm -hmm. but in a good way, because I, I don't really like to be filmed without my permission either mm -hmm. but um, coming from New York City for example um, I remember there was one time on the subway in New York there was a photographer and she took a picture of somebody sitting down and that person got really mad they're like what are you taking my picture for mm -hmm. like don't do that and then she was like you're in public sorry oh so uh, that doesn't really fly mm -hmm. here I think I, I've I, seen something about there's a law or something that you shouldn't 
yeah. take I've heard pictures that, of single people. I don't know if it's true, but mm. I've heard that people can sue you mm. if you like put them online without their permission. I think there is something here in Japan about that, but I'm not 100% sure on like how that flies in mm -hmm. court. But there are actually some things actually against the law to just go single out a person and just yeah. film them. Is there privacy you're disrespecting at that point? So, yeah. did you know in Kyoto there are actually some streets where you're not allowed to film at all? Yeah, the Gion area. Yeah. We actually interview people about that topic because mm -hmm. what happened was there was a Maiko who wanted to, she just wanted to go to work. She wasn't dressed up for everyone's entertainment, she mm -hmm. was dressed up for her clients, she was going to go perform. But the tourists crowded around her to take pictures of her and then wouldn't let her leave. That's and really she scary. couldn't make it to work because they cornered her, they wouldn't yeah. let her go. And that's when they started having this law in Gion where the actual Maikos, Geisha Maikos, still are the Geikos. The, the started having this law of no pictures at all yeah so you'd be not messing with this anymore mm -hmm. it's gone too bad and i think especially kyoto here has been a place where tour tourists have been taking it a bit too far and with the yeah. pictures like you're not their property you, you know if you see people on the streets they're not there for your entertainment they're doing their life they're going on their business so they if if you paid money to see them yeah. <laughs> or something like that. It's something completely different. Yeah. But if they're just going on with their lives, you can't just drag them into mm -hmm. your photo and then not let them go. Had that happened to a friend of mine, we were at the Harajuku Fashion Walk and we're all dressed in flashy and we literally had this tourist who grabbed her arm and pulled her into her picture. And that was a girl from Australia and she was like, you know, sort of. You know? <laughs> she could say that, but Japanese people were very much very shy. So they might not be able to say that because this is not a culture where you voice your opinion straight away. Mm -hmm. So you're making someone incredibly feel incredibly uncomfortable and take that for your own pleasure. <laughs> it's just I'm like, ah, yeah. It's something to be very careful about. Now, of course, there's a lot of people who film walking down the street or going somewhere and stuff that you can't change that there are people around you if you yeah, walk if around it yeah if it's card isn't you can't change that but if you single out a certain person or two people or a group mm -hmm. you generally need to ask them hey is that okay yeah. be nice yeah. it, it's common politeness i think you know common courtesy to just go like hey is this okay and if they say no you need to respect that too i think i personally feel very strong about this because i dress in harajuku fashion mm -hmm. and had a lot of people who just would take pictures of me without asking without permission i don't know where it's and then i don't know where it's landing but again i did not dress up for you <laughs> yeah, yeah. i dressed up because that's how i decided to dress up this morning mm -hmm. so of course if you stand out people want to take pictures and best thing you can do is just ask yeah. it's not that hard to call out and communicate with the person you can even say in english sometimes people say can i take a picture and yeah. then you give just point like okay then, yeah 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 and it's that easy. and it's so much it also brings you closer to the person wow. like if i just you know pull if out my camera and just take a picture of you and run <laughs> off that's just sneaky and shady yeah. but if i go <laughs> and then you you can she gets the choice whether yeah. she wants to be in it and if you give each other a smile and she says okay okay there is communication mm -hmm. there is light like the the situation changes, the energy of the situation completely changes. Yeah. So. I get really annoyed when people are like taking stuff of kids too. It's like they're oh, yeah. okay, their uniforms mm. are cute. Because um, mm -hmm. I used to work in preschools when mm -hmm. I was teaching, and uh, when tourists were here, like um, toddlers, sometimes they go to the park in this really adorable cart, mm. or sometimes so they have like a um, like they hold these little hoops and they all walk together and like two by twos to go to the park mm. and like people would always try to take pictures of them so we had to say like please don't take pictures of our students mm. like because kids can't consent mm. like even if you ask the kid like hey can i take your picture they don't understand what they're agreeing to mm. so yeah, that's a really, like, I understand the wanting to take pictures. They're adorable. The amount of times when I've seen, like, you know, sometimes the parents dress the kids up in, like, little bear ears, and they look like a tiny bit wicked, and they're like, oh, my God, you're a diver. I want to take pictures. And then you have to be the adult. 
if you want to take a picture, talk with the parent. Mm -hmm. Or you also have to be adult and say, no, this is not right, and don't do it. It's that simple. <laughs> you, know, you can't just go snapping people and if it's like everyone is there for you, they're not there for you. Ask people, it's not that hard. <laughs> For some of the schools that I worked at, they would have um, like a blog that they would update for the parents. But even for that, that was a private blog, they would still have to get written consent from the parents mm -hmm. to take pictures of the kids for the blog. And there was one student I remember, her mom didn't want her to be shown, so anytime we made like school videos or took school pictures, we had to like put a sticker over mm -hmm. the daughter's face. Yeah, and that you don't need to respect that. Sometimes it's it's sad because you have this group picture and there's one person you will never see. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to respect the wishes of the parents with that kind of stuff. There are some ways around it I've seen in media used a lot is sometimes film people from behind. Yeah, that's what I that's, tried to do. Exactly. That's, kind, that's okay. That's considered okay. Their mm -hmm. face isn't in there and you still get that feeling of like mm -hmm. whatever, a couple holding hands with this cute little bit walking on the streets or something like that. And it, it doesn't expose their, you know, them, identity, yeah. their identity. And um, that I've been seeing a lot, or like from a very far distance, mm -hmm. like you see something and it's like from a very far distance, or you blur the people out. So you know, yes, they're there, but you kind of blur them slightly. So it's not just in their face. Yeah. So there's ways around it. It is harder to film in Japan. If, if any of your viewers wants to come to Japan and film, it is harder. You need to be a bit more of a grown up and actually talk with people and ask them instead of just, you know, filming sneakily. But it is just so much better. It re respects the culture, it respects people as well. So it is a bit harder at the start, but you'll get used to it. So do you get a lot of people that reject interviews or yeah. if somebody sees the camera, they just yeah. run the other direction? Oh yeah, so much, <laughs> so, so much. And sometimes like, we spend, I speak to hundreds of people a day about interviews and hundreds of people turn me down. And of course that doesn't feel good, but that doesn't give me the right to go and just randomly pull them in and start asking them questions because I'm like, oh, I got you by surprise. Ha <laughs> ha, surprise interview. You can't do that. You can't do that. It's not going to fly. It's not going to look good on you either. It's also not going to be good for your brand. It's, it's a, something completely else, like, you know, for example, you're, you're sitting here in your cafe and you're joining one and we're coming in, so, okay, what do you think about Kyoto Girl? Like, that kind of stuff is fun abroad. Like, I've, you know, some people are totally cool with that. Yeah. You know, I've, I, I watched um, Kevin Freshwater, I think, who just randomly goes, like, finish the lyrics, and then <laughs> gives them, like, start singing a song. That is hilarious, and I love it. And I'd love to do that in Japan. You just can't do it yeah, in Japan. It's, it's not the like culture. It's a, it's a shame, like I understand the fun and the wanting to do it, but it's not quite the same. Yeah. So we were chatting before the camera started rolling about um, like the, the demographic that you would get for the interviews. Like some, sometimes you just can't get like every, like every age, every ethnicity, every yeah. like you can't. type. You can't. Because some people say no. Exactly. And there are certain groups that are more likely to also say no. Mm -hmm. um, it, I don't know why just happens to be like this the older Japanese people get them less likely they want to see their face on camera mm -hmm. so even when you go to a good restaurant and feature them mm -hmm. the, the the chef in the restaurant it might be her restaurant but she will say I don't have the face anymore to be on camera mm -hmm. is a Japanese thing which I find oh, a bit yeah. sad I'm like just because you got older doesn't mean you shouldn't show your face anymore that kind of is a bit sad but a lot of people are like now I'm older now I don't want to have my face on camera anymore and again you got to respect that so you how do you film though that person? Do you just film their hands? Do you film their voice? Or do you put something in front of their face? Which always feels a bit sad, right? So you have to be really creative and work around with that. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the older people get the less likely they say no. And then at certain groups, like we try to interview a variety of foreigners when we do a foreigner interviews for us Japanese, but it just tends that certain certain people say no like sometimes we, we we film all day and i i spoke to anyone i could recognize as a foreigner yeah. <laughs> and and still um i get turned down and then people say oh we don't have enough other asians in your videos and i'm like oh trust me i tried oh trust me i tried but either they didn't speak english or they just turned me down because i'm this random fancy dressed foreign lady who comes up to them on the street and says would you like to be an interview it is their right to say no so 
all you can do is try your best next time and if people turn you down don't take it personal yeah. what about like um restaurants and other businesses you you usually have to get permission in there too yeah. like i know sometimes um usually um for restaurants and cafes they say like it's fine if you film the food mm -hmm. it's fine if you want to film the atmosphere but please don't show other customers yes that's very important yeah. that is so important in japan because a it's a customer culture and mm -hmm. b if you make customers feel uncomfortable you're going to notice like people are going to start shuffling they're starting to start moving a little bit and even though you don't have them in the shot some people will feel uncomfortable and maybe they don't come back to the store maybe they complain to the manager yeah, yeah, like i had a possible. situation where like afterwards someone went and actually complained to the manager and then to the head and then to the head because oh, she no. thought she was in a shot even mm -hmm. though she wanted oh. but i still had to take the entire shot out even though she wasn't in it i had to take an entire video out for a person that thought she was in it even though she wasn't in it mm -hmm. so you really you, that can go south as well like if people film other people without permission full on film them if they somehow find that you're in trouble too yeah. so even if they're not really in the shot and you can't really see them if they don't want the shot and think they are in it you need to take it out yep very strict Japanese people are very strict with that kind of stuff yeah. you just gotta work around it yeah, yeah. it's not that hard mm. um but yeah, you might not get as many candid reactions yeah. that way, but I think it's, that's better than making people uncomfortable, personally. Yeah. I think it's gonna make you, if you... Candids are fine and fun in other countries, mm -hmm. but they're really not kind to Japanese people. It's kind of taken something that they didn't okay yet. So if you can, always go and ask them first, is it okay, can I film here? Just to film here on the rooftop, we asked in advance, that kind of thing. Um, you know, double check, check with the head, make sure can we film here and again, please don't get other customers in, because it might make a customer feel uncomfortable. And sometimes in Japan, it's also customers might not want to know that they've been here. Maybe they're, you know, they took a day off and said, oh, I'm working, but they actually <laughs> just want to have a day off, you know? <laughs> So give them give them the chance to have that privacy. If someone happens to be somewhere in the background, like someone looking past that, we can't change that. That would be really hard to edit out. But if it's something really focusing on small groups, like I said, please ask them. It's not that hard. Yeah. That's our advice to you. Yes, it's not easy, but I'm sure you can do it. Yeah. Can I take a picture? Video Can I take a video? That's all you need to know. Shashin, okay? Video, okay? Yeah, that's a very simple thing, okay, too. Okay, this, these are iPods, but you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for chatting with me. Thank you for that chatting with fun. me. We ate a whole bag of sakura marshmallows. I so. ate the whole bag. You had just like two. I ate the rest. <laughs> no, I felt like I ate more. Really? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Time for more snacks, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right.